Hello, my name is Nathan Jackson, and this is Nathan's Neighborhood History. Today we're going to be featuring part three of the Lafayette Square neighborhood, the section to the north and east of the neighborhood. This particular row of houses is known as Harris Row. Harris Row is named after one of the significant residents who lived here, William Torrey Harris, who was a prominent figure with the St. Louis public school system and helped to get a lot of the schools and different public school uh, system features in the city of St. Louis off the ground back in the mid 19th century. The row was actually built in 1870 by a lawyer named William S. Pope. He had about 16 or 18 row houses built in the Italian style at that time, of which about 14 of them remain today. All of these houses face 2nd Carondelet Avenue, which was one of the main thoroughfares leading out of downtown St. Louis, going all the way down to today's South Broadway, or what was then known as Carondelet Avenue, at around the point of the Lent Brewery, making it one of the main connectors from St. Louis to Carondelet. Today, this row of houses is one of the longest rows in the entire city of St. Louis, with 14 houses all still standing. During the 1970s, there was a plan to raise much of the eastern part of the Lafayette Square neighborhood for something known as Highway 755. Highway 755 was planned to connect the intersection at Highway 44 and Highway 55 with the 20th and 22nd Street exits in downtown St. Louis, it would have cleared a lot of Lafayette Square. But thanks to the National Register Historic District nomination, with Harris Row being named as one of the St. Louis city landmarks, they were able to save this part of Lafayette Square and the highway was downgraded to the Truman Parkway and this area of Lafayette Square was spared. Because of this, Today, 50 years later, we still have one of the longest rows in the whole city of St. Louis with their beautiful limestone fronts and Italian styling. So this house on the northwest corner of Hickory Street and South 18th Street, originally 2nd Carondelet Avenue, was built in 1881 in the Second Empire style. This is one of the largest Second Empire style homes that is tucked away in the neighborhood as opposed to facing the park. It was built for a guy named Edward Schuster and Father Morris Schuster. And Edward was the owner of a printing press in downtown St. Louis. In its later years, in the 1970s, this became the home of Bob Cassily, the renowned proprietor of the City Museum and local artist who had a fairly large impact in the preservation and restoration of Lafayette Square as as well as his development of the city museum. So originally this church on the northeast corner of Dolman and Hickory Street was known as St. John's Episcopal Church. At the time, many of the residents in Lafayette Square were Anglo-Saxon Protestants, and so Lafayette Square had a number of Protestant churches, whereas most St. Louis neighborhoods started off with Catholic churches. The St. John's Episcopal Church suffered heavy damage during the 1896 tornado, ultimately ripping off the steeple, which can be seen on the 1875 Compton Dry Map. Afterwards, only the base of the church can be seen. In about 19 or so, the Episcopal Church closed and it became the St. Mary's Assumption Catholic Church and it still remains as such to this day. So this set of row houses on Dolman Street was built in around 1870 in the Italian style. These were built directly across the street from the Episcopal Church and can be seen on the 1875 Compton Dry Map, although they're interrupted by the steeple. In 1877, one of the residents who lived there was a guy named F.F. F. Flesh, 
with his wife Laura and both of them were members of an elite club called the St. Louis Club. Later on in about 1889 another guy named A.J. Lyman was listed as living in the house and he was a member of the Merchants Exchange which was sort of like the business and stock exchange for all of the major manufacturers in the city of St. Louis at the time. This bro survived the 1896 tornado despite heavy damage occurring all throughout the Lafayette Square neighborhood. This Second Empire style townhouse on Hickory Street was built in 1878. One of the first residents was Rufus S. Carnes, although he only lived in the house for about a year. A later resident of the house in the 1880s was George Dana, who was a secretary for the Excelsior Manufacturing Company. After the 1896 tornado, when the aforementioned St. John's Episcopal Church was damaged, the Reverend took residence in this particular house as the church was being repaired. This house, which was built in the Italian style around 1870, was home to George McGuire, who in the 1840s had previously been St. Louis's sixth mayor and the first mayor in St. Louis born of Irish descent. During McGuire's term as mayor, he retrofitted the city's government to transition it from being a small territorial town into being the major metropolis that it would be known as in the middle and late 19th century by creating offices like the treasurer and comptroller and also creating the the city's workhouse where prisoners were required to quarry limestone as part of their sentence. Only recently did the city workhouse close. So this house was built in 1872 in the mid 19th century vernacular style. As you can see, it has brick corbels roof line and it also has the slightly arched brick windows. It was built in about 1872 for a guy named Joseph Busher. And Joseph Busher actually had a limestone quarry about a few blocks away down at Missouri and Hickory Avenue. And while he had his limestone quarry down there, he lived in this house right here. So this house on Mississippi Avenue to the north of Park Avenue was built in about 1860 in the federal style. It's a later example of the federal style as it features both the flat limestone lintels as well as two curved limestone pieces over the two front entryways. On the 1875 Compton and Dry map, there were two of these residences and one was listed as the residence of a local dentist named Dr. Deanst. Also in the 1880s and 1890s, there was another doctor who lived in this particular house as well. Today, this is one of the older houses that survives in Lafayette Square. Thank you for watching this house. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to tune in to part four to see more of this neighborhood. Be sure to follow St. Louis History and Architecture on Facebook and Instagram and book a tour with us to see the full neighborhood in a three hour walking tour.